Hey, Trevor here, back with another video on the nitty gritty of owning and operating a luxury picnic company. And for those who are returning, thanks so much. For those who are new, the reason that I have a handful of videos on luxury picnic businesses is because my wife and I started and grew one and I love sharing the tips and tricks we have learned along the way because to be honest, I'm passionate about business, so I like sharing that information with you. All right, so the purpose of this particular video is to answer some of the repeated questions that I keep getting in the comments of my other videos. Namely, I'm gonna be telling you about how to price your picnic services and give you some examples of how we did it. And then at the end of the video, I'm gonna just kind of briefly cover insurance, the insurance needs of your picnic business because that's another one that I've been getting quite a bit. There are many different ways to price your picnic services, many different methods that you can use. What I'm gonna do is give you a few of the tools that you can use to try to figure out what's the best price for your particular services because there's no one across the board answer for what is the right price for this service. And keep in mind, if you don't have a picnic business, if you have a different business or want to have a different business, these methods can be used to price pretty much any business service because they're just sound principles. The first method. This isn't necessarily the best way to come up with your final price that you're going to use forever, but it's a good baseline way to figure out uh, the minimum that you need to charge in order for it to be worth your time, in order for it to be profitable. And that is to look at the cost that you have in your business. Now the good thing about a luxury picnic business is you don't have a whole lot of variable costs. Each time you do a picnic, it's not like you're buying a new picnic table. Those are fixed costs because you're using them over and over again after purchasing or building them one time. However, there are some variable costs. For instance, you might be supplying food for your picnic. If you are, then you need to find out exactly what that is costing you for each picnic that you do. I assume you're also gonna be driving to these picnics and not just hoofing it on foot, so you're gonna have the cost of gas to get these to these places. There could be other costs as well, but regardless, you get the idea. Find out how much cost there is to you to put on a picnic, and then from there, just charge above that what you need to for it to be worth your time for the time you invest into one of those picnics. Once again, that's just a very good baseline method to kind of get an initial idea of, hey, if we're not at least charging this, it's probably not going to be worth it because I'm not gonna let it cost me money and I'm not gonna be doing this if I'm making five bucks an hour. Once you have a good idea for the cost of your business, the minimum price you need to charge, I then recommend that you look into the competition. So look for other local luxury picnic companies. It's a pretty established business model now, so there's a handful of them in just about every decent sized market and see what they are charging. And if you don't have any really local luxury picnic uh, businesses in your area, look what other ones in different markets are trying. Maybe try to find a market that is similar to your market in characteristics and just see what the competition is getting away with. Keep in mind, you need to think about whether these companies are legit, whether they're busy or not. You can probably get a good idea from that from what, looking at their social channels and seeing if they're posting frequently and if those frequent pictures look like they're from different picnics, not the same material, the same subjects, the same people in every single picture. So anyway, by using the competition, you can get an idea of what other people are currently charging and that means that there are people out there that are currently paying those prices for those picnics. Now, a note on if you aren't able to use a very local competitor to gauge the price interest. If you're choosing a competitor in a different market, just make sure to make adjustments as needed. If you live in a rural town in Kansas, you're probably not gonna be charging the same prices that somebody who does high-end picnics in LA near large houses and a beach might be able to get away with charging. So use common sense, but this is a good way to really get an idea for the starting point where you can put a price out there based off of what you see other people charging and use your intuition to think what people are gonna be willing to pay for your service that is similar, but also hopefully different in some key ways to separate you from them. The third method that I'm gonna mention right now is a method that I personally would recommend using after you've gone through and done these two other methods that I just talked about. And that is price according to how busy you want to be. So once you've been running for a month or two and you've kind of started with that 
price where you priced yourself according to the competition and according to your cost, you can raise or lower your prices to adjust how busy you are. Let's say you're charging $200 for a picnic and you are getting four to five picnics a week, but you decide that you want to be busier. Well, it doesn't take a genius to see that if you lower your price to $150 or $125, you'll probably get even more picnics. So you really have to find out where that balance is of where you make the most money because maybe you lower your price but you get more picnics to compensate for that so your overall revenue is higher. And not just where you make the most money, but where you are at the busyness level that you would like to be. And this comes into my fourth point, which is really just kind of like a sub note, and that is experiment. So for instance, we started our picnic services out at $200 for a two person picnic. And we were able to get like a couple to a few picnics a week on holidays. We usually had a few picnics in a day. It just depended on the situation. But regardless, we had a fair amount of demand and we were happy with that. However, as we started to expand into doing some other services, we decided to raise our prices to $300 for a picnic, knowing that that was quite a bit more than almost anybody else charging the market, knowing that that's a very premium price to ask, and knowing that that would make a severe dent in the amount of customers we have for a picnic. But we were okay with that because we wanted to focus more on these other services we were offering. And to be honest, we were just kind of struggling keeping up with the demand because this was a side project for us and we have some young kids. So we figured, hey, we want this to really be worth our time if we're taking the time away from our family to do this picnic. So we did still get some picnics after that. As you can guess, the demand dropped quite a bit, but each picnic that we did was way more profitable and we were doing less of them, but still doing them because we still wanted to have some. So it worked out for us. So my advice is, experiment and price according to how busy you want to be because you are in control of that. That is the power of being a business owner. If you want to be the busiest picnic company out there, charge 75 bucks if you want to. If you want to be the most premium picnic business out there, charge $400 for a picnic, $500, I don't know, there's really no limit. You just have to understand that you've got to charge a price that somebody is willing to pay and you probably need to justify the price by having a service that is premium enough to be able to charge such a price. Okay, now that we've talked about pricing, let's just briefly discuss insurance. And to be honest, I'm only mentioning this because I have been asked about it multiple times in the comments of my videos. The thing is, I really can't advise you on insurance. I don't consider myself super knowledgeable on insurance and you'll really be best off talking to your own personal insurance professional, your insurance expert, to make sure that you are being covered and protected as best as possible. I will tell you that when we talked to our insurance representative, I was told that we needed a general liability policy and to be honest that seems like the baseline level of policy coverage for, for most businesses. However, you may be doing different things in your business than we are so you might need additional insurance. There might be other special type of policies that you need based off of the things that you are doing. So you know that gives you an idea of what it was like for us. but. I hope you will go and talk to your insurance professional and find out you know, the best type of insurance or insurances that you need tailored for your situation. So that's what I've got for you. I hope that was helpful. As always, I would love it if you could subscribe to my channel. If you aren't subscribed already, I'll keep giving you valuable business content about picnic businesses and online businesses and side hustles and gigs and many of the money making opportunities out there. So please hit that subscribe button and I will see you on the next video.